every offshore installation is a confined and self-contained community. Everyone there relies on everyone else to carry out their work effectively and above all else, safely. Although rules and regulations may vary between different countries and different operators, the importance of safety is universal. If you are going offshore for the first time, you may not be used to the strict working procedures and the commitment to safety that is essential to offshore life. Nevertheless, you will be expected to comply with these practices very quickly. Start off right by obeying all the instructions on boarding and alighting from the helicopter. Once you have collected your baggage, make your way to the reception point. There you will be assigned a room or a cabin, also a muster station and a survival craft. These will be shown to you soon after your arrival. The muster stations are where everyone gathers should there be an emergency on the platform. Uh, mate, it's your first time on the platform? Yes, it is. So you'll be in cabin 39B and could you be in the cinema at one o'clock for a safety briefing? Thank you. Thank you. Once you have found your room, and before you unpack, check to see where your life jacket or survival suit is stored. You may well have been instructed in its use on shore, and this information will be repeated at your offshore safety briefing. It shouldn't take long to unpack, because as all installations have laundries, you don't need to take much personal clothing offshore. Shortly after your arrival, you must attend a safety briefing. This may include a film or slideshow, as well as a talk by the safety officer. You will be given a safety booklet, if you haven't already received one, containing the essential points of the briefing. These include what to do in an emergency and the signals that indicate when an emergency is taking place. A video of the platform that was made on here. In offshore oil fields, where extremely low temperatures are commonplace, survival suits may be a legal requirement for abandonment. Listen carefully to everything that you are told, even if you think you know what's going to be said because the precise details of where to go and what to do vary from installation to installation. To take just one example, there are many different types of life jackets and they are all capable of keeping you afloat, but only provided that they're correctly worn. So it's essential to listen carefully to the briefing. The status signals also vary from installation to installation but their importance does not vary. You must obey their requirements immediately and without question. It is essential that you fully understand what these signals mean. Okay, gents, that more or less the safety officer will always end the briefing with a question and answer session. What about do we get pay protection on the platform? Glasses. If there is anything you don't understand or are not clear about, be sure to ask. Soon afterwards, you will be shown the way to your muster station and your lifeboat. Generally, the muster stations are very close to the lifeboats, but this is not always so. You may find the layout of the platform a bit bewildering at first, but don't be hesitant about asking questions. Offshore, everyone depends on everyone else, and for everyone there was once a first visit. Make sure you know how to get to your muster station. There you'll find an ample supply of life jackets or survival suits so that you don't need to go to your cabin if you're near the muster station when the alarm sounds. The lifeboat will be totally enclosed and powered by diesel engine. There are several types. Each installation will have specially trained crews whose job it will be to lower and operate the lifeboats in an emergency. All you will have to do is to follow their instructions. You will find that no one should ever leave the accommodation without wearing a helmet, 
safety boots and other protective clothing. Take care how you walk about the installation. Where you have a choice, choose stairs and walkways sheltered from the weather. Take your time and hold on to handrails so as to avoid slipping or falling. Storms can blow up quickly at sea and can make walking treacherous, particularly at night. Offshore, much of the accommodation is maintained at a slight positive pressure in order to keep out any oil or gas vapours. This means air locks and heavy doors that may be awkward until you become used to them. Always close them behind you. For the sake of cleanliness, you will be required to take off your boots when entering accommodation areas. Your new colleagues will waste no time in assigning you your duties, and they will expect a high standard of workmanship and a commitment to safety. When potentially hazardous work needs to be done, all installations have a permit to work system. This is a legal requirement. The precise details of the permit to work system will vary from installation to installation. The system will be explained to you as will the various safety aspects of your particular job. If in doubt, ask. In the offshore environment, the range of potentially hazardous operations is very large. To give a few examples, any work involving welding or electrical equipment, any work in enclosed areas, wherever radioactive materials are to be used, or where scaffolding needs to be erected. Also, when any hoisting or over the side work is to take place. All these will need special permits. If you are in any doubt whether a permit is needed, ask the safety officer. The systems employed for granting these permits are not identical, but their objectives are. Firstly, to ensure that all work is carried out with the correct safety procedures. Secondly, to ensure that the installation management know precisely where and when any potentially dangerous work is taking place. This is so that it can be coordinated with all other activities and monitored as necessary. Okay, could I ask you to initial the safety requirements for me, please? To say that you've read... Uh... It is a legal requirement that you comply with all the details of your permit to work. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. The control room is the nerve centre of the installation. It is there that all operations are supervised. The people there need to know about everything that is going on. You may be required to file a copy of your permit to work there. Your strict adherence to the times and places specified on your permit will be taken for granted. Check carefully again all safety requirements before you start any work. Don't change your mind or work beyond your allocated time without submitting a further...